so we're so glad that you're here this evening. And so we want to begin with a song that calls us to worship, O oh, Come, All Ye Faithful. And so if you'd like to stand as the team leads. Tonight, we retell the story, the old, old story, that with every telling becomes new again. The story of Christmas begins long, long ago, long before the child was born, long before the prophets foretold his birth, long before this fall of Adam and long before creation, long before the beginning of time. God the Father, God the Spirit, and God the Son agreed upon a plan. God would create an amazing world full of wonders and splendors, of soaring mountains and seething seas of gentle summer rains and wild winter storms of giant trees and multicolored flowers, a world alive with creatures great and small. And the crown of his creation, human beings, male and female, made in the image of God, creatures endowed with free will, a godlike capacity, free to enter into the Creator's love, free to choose good, or free to choose bad. And we know how the first couple chose. They chose to rebel against God, and it was bad. Powerful creatures able to achieve the greatest good, also creatures able to cause the greatest evil. We as a race are those creatures, and alas, we have spawned an endless stream of hurt and hate and death and destruction. And so the history of mankind is a history of wars and rumors of wars, of hunger, of famine, of cruelty and hate, of greed and violence, of stealing and killing, of things unspeakable and dark. Son against father, mother against daughter, husband betraying wife, endless combinations of strife. The brotherhood of man, a worthy ideal too seldom achieved in the home and in the nation. And all this brokenness runs through my heart as well. I know it. The good that I know to do, I do not do. And the bad that I don't want to do, I do anyway. But God had a plan. And God made a promise. God would honor the free choice we make. He would also bring a lifeline for any and all who receive it. God repeated his promise of a Savior over and over. Here is the promise given through the prophet Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Jesus. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The people walking in a darkness have seen a great light and those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The story of Christmas is about God keeping his promise to the human race that has lost its way, that has lost sight of its creator. The story of Christmas is the mystery of God. He chose to step into the mess we made of his perfect world. He became one of us. This is what we call the incarnation. God the Son, the eternal Word, who created all things, set aside his powers and his rights, and became one of us, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Tonight we tell this beautiful story one more time in song and in scripture. We invite you and we invite one another to enter into the story, to feel its power and know its truth, to be renewed in its hope and in its love. Shall we pray together? Our God and Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to come together as community 
to experience the strength, the bond that we have together, to be able to lift our voices, to join our hearts and minds in worship and in joy, to express again the age-old story of the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so we give you thanks for each one, and we know, Lord, that as we open our hearts to you, that you will be pleased to meet each of us and to renew in us the joy of knowing the true and living God. Amen. Let's join together in singing, Come Thou, Long Expected Jesus. begins to unfold with the visit of the angel to Mary. Luke 1, 26 to 38 says, In the sixth month, God sent the, Abra the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. If we are honest, we know that we live in a world that's in a mess. And it's into this darkness that the Lord brought his light. For some of us, the darkness seems remote. For others, we know it all too well. I heard the bells on Christmas Day tells the story bad and good. Let's sing it together. Let's return to the story as it was unfolding long ago. The people back then understood about the birds and the bees where babies come from just as well as we do. The announcement by the angel made to Mary was a difficult thing for Joseph to accept. It was a cause for scandal, for anger, at betrayal. God had to send a special messenger to help Joseph understand and do the right thing by Mary and the unborn child. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commended him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Let's join in singing, What Child Is This?
Let's continue the story as we light the last of the Advent candles, the Christ candle. This Christmas Eve, we light the white candle. This is the Christ candle. His candle is brighter because he is the light of the world. Our hope, our life, our King, and our Savior has finally come. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. He became one of us. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Apostle writes about the amazing humility of his love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. The birth of Jesus was just the beginning. No one else had ever uh, had the impact of Jesus. He has changed history and is continuing to change it. We celebrate the gift of life and hope. We light candles because God has split the darkness. We bring gifts because God has given us his son. Let us pray. <laughs> Jesus, you are the Father's greatest gift. Your teachings, your life examples are precious. Your death in our place is beyond price. For we have not been redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Son, the Lamb of God. Your resurrection has broken the sting of death, and the gift of your Spirit leads and guides us through the days of our lives, until at last we are carried into your eternal presence. Jesus, we celebrate your birth, the fulfillment of the ancient promises of God. You are our hope, our joy, our life, our everything. We love you, Lord. Amen. And so now we see the light of the Christ candle representing his birth, the coming of light into the world. We know the story of the shepherds and the angels. Let's enter into it as we sing, while shepherds watch their flocks by night, and then angels we have heard on high.
Now let's listen to the scripture that tells us of the angels and of the shepherds. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping their watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Let's be seated. And I invite Brian Austin to read his poem, His Christmas Gift to the Lord Jesus, Love Revealed. I'd draw a picture, if I could, of one who had great skill with wood, of one who learned the carpenter's trade, though by his word whole worlds were made. I'd draw a stable, crude and bare. Seems strange God's son should be born there, that he who formed the universe should lie in manger after birth a cattle stall for a king. Yet it was here the song did ring as angels sang the Savior's birth. God's love revealed peace on earth. Behind the stable I'd draw a cross, a scene of hate and death and loss. Its shadow or the babe would fall and form the sword piercing Mary's soul. Behind the cross, an empty tomb, no longer filled with death and gloom. Beside it stands the risen king. Now angel songs again do ring. Peace on earth comes at awesome cost. The babe was born to face the cross. Christmas is God's love revealed. The shed blood is sin's curse repealed. I cannot look on manger scene without asking, what does it mean? Love, poured out for you and me, is defined in stable and Calvary's tree. Thank you for that gift from your heart. And another gift of love to our beloved King, as we celebrate his birthday, Pastor David Hildebrand singing, Mary, did you know? And of course, Dave, welcome. We're so glad that you're here and that soon you'll be taking over leadership of the pastoral ministry. Now I invite you to join with us as we sing our gift of praise to Christ the King. Let's sing a Christmas offering. Let's stand to sing.
seated as we hear the scripture read of the coming of the Magi. After Jesus, this is Matthew 2, 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the, heard the king, they went on their way, and the, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When, there, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let us sing the first Noel. Let's stand to sing. seated. The story of the babe born in a manger is the story of light overcoming darkness. And we know that we have the privilege of sharing the love and the light of Jesus. It was Jesus who declared, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And now we will have a duet. Addison and Emily, I believe, are singing. And it's called Light of the World. Wow, what a... <laughs> Thank you, Addison and Emily. Now when you came in, you received a candle. And so we are going to join together in the lighting of the candles. And so just a few instructions. When your candle is lit, keep it upright and let the person with the unlit candle bring their candle over to yours. I'll invite the ushers to come forward. We're going to stand and we're going to join together in singing Silent Night.
Jesus declared, I am the light of the world. But he also said, you are the light of the world. Just the way the moon reflects the glory and the light of the sun. So we have the privilege of going out into our community and reflecting the beauty and the love of Jesus. I'm going to invite you to blow out the candle now. And you'll have the opportunity to deposit that candle on the way out. But then you'll be given another object that will glow. A glow stick. And this you will take to remind you that you have the privilege of glowing, of showing the love and the joy of Jesus, of making a difference by blessing others. And so may this be a rich and joyful Christmas celebration for you as you seek to be like Jesus, to enter into his life, even as he has entered into our lives. And so as we close, we'll join together in singing Joy to the World. And as you make your way out and deposit your candles, you'll be given one of these beautiful, very colored glow sticks. God bless you. And very good. for our team that has led us this evening. God bless you and Merry Christmas and remember to deposit your candles and to pick up your glow stick.